In this video, we're going to continue going through that problem-solving strategy that was introduced in the previous video. As a review, we use a systematic problem-solving approach, where we break down problem-solving into five basic steps. In the first step, we identify exactly what we're being asked to solve. In the second step, we determine values of known quantities or other relevant information in the problem that will lead us to our answer. In the third step, we devise a strategy that's independent of the specific values given in step two. In the fourth step, we implement our strategy by plugging in the values and the information from step two into step three. And in the last step, we use approximations to determine if our answer is reasonable. I recommend that you use this approach even for simple problems if for no other reason than it becomes second nature to you. Here's the first problem that we're going to solve. A 32.65 gram insoluble metal block is placed in toluene. Density of toluene equals 0.864 grams per milliliter. The final volume of the toluene and the metal together is 50.00 milliliters. The solid and toluene together have a mass of 58.58 grams. What is the density of the metal? Now we're going to go through and employ the strategy outlined in the previous slide. Step one, determine the problem to be solved, the density of the metal. Step two, identify the relevant information that's going to lead us to determining the density of the metal. The information that was given in the problem is the mass of the metal, the density of the toluene, the volume of the toluene and the metal together, and the mass of the toluene and the metal together. I'm now going to go through and develop the strategy, step three, and implement that strategy, step four, by hand as I did previously. The strategy that we're going to use in this problem is a little bit more involved than what we used in the previous one. Here, we're going to work from our answer, determine our knowns and our unknowns, keep going until we get all knowns, and then bring that problem forward. The density of the metal is defined as its mass over its volume. We have the mass given to us in the problem, which means that we need to determine the volume of the metal. The volume of the metal is equal to the total volume, the volume of the metal plus the toluene, minus the volume of the toluene. We have the total volume. We need to get the volume of the toluene. The volume of the toluene can be determined from its mass and from a manipulation of the density. The density is given in grams per milliliter. We need milliliters on top, so we take its inverse. Going through, mass times the inverse of the density, grams cancel, we're left with the volume. In this, we have the density. We need to get the mass. The mass of the metal, or toluene, I should say, is equal to the total mass minus the mass of the metal. These we have both of. So we can now take that and work our way forward. We're now going to go through and we're going to implement the strategy that we just devised. The first thing that we're going to do is calculate the mass of the toluene. We're going to take the total mass, 58.58 grams, subtract 32.65, the mass of the metal, and arrive at 25.93 grams. This is going to be used to calculate the volume of the toluene. 
the volume of the toluene is equal to its mass divided by 1 times the inverse of its density, 1 over 0 0.864 grams per milliliter. This is equal to 30 mils, 3 sig figs limited by the sig figs in the density. The volume of the metal is then equal to the total volume, 50 mils, minus 30 mils, which equals 20 mils. Once again, three sig figs in the answer, limited by 30.0. The density of the metal is then equal to its mass, 32.65 grams, divided by 20.0 mils, or 1.63 grams per milliliter, three sig figs in the answer, because of three sig figs in the volume. We arrived at the value for the density of the metal at 1.63 grams per milliliter. We're now going to determine using approximations if that's a reasonable value. We're going to determine the mass of the toluene by rounding the total mass of the toluene and the metal together up to 60, rounding the mass of the metal down to 30, 60 minus 30 equals 30 grams, we're going to approximate the density of the toluene as equal to one gram per milliliter. So the volume of the toluene is approximately 30 mils. The total volume of 50 minus 30 yields 20 mils for the volume of the metal. And we approximate the density by taking 30 grams over 20 milliliters and arriving at 1.5 grams per milliliter which is close to 1.63 grams per milliliter, suggesting the answer we arrived at is the correct answer. In our second problem, we're told that a 15 centimeter long cylindrical glass tube that's been sealed at one end is filled with ethanol. The density of ethanol equals 0 0.789 grams per milliliter. We're told that it takes 11.86 grams of ethanol to fill the cylinder, what is the diameter of the cylinder? And then we're given the formula for volume of a cylinder, which is equal to pi r squared times the height. The problem we're being asked to solve is the diameter of the cylinder. Determining the relevant information given in the problem, we're given that the volume of a cylinder equals pi r squared times this height. We know that 2 times the radius is equal to the diameter, which is what we're being asked to solve. We're told that the height equals 15 centimeters, the mass of the ethanol equals 11.86 grams, and the density of ethanol is 0 0.789 grams per milliliter. I'm now going to perform steps 3, devising the strategy, and step 4, implementing the strategy. The strategy that we're going to use is similar to the one that we used before. Starting from the answer, finding out our knowns and our unknowns, and then taking that and working the problem forwards. What we want to know is the diameter of the cylinder, and we know that this is two times the radius. We don't know what the radius is, so we need to calculate that. We know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared times the height. Rearranging this, r squared equals the volume over pi times the height, which is equal to r times the square root of the volume times the height. In this, we need to calculate the volume, but we have the height of the cylinder. We can get that volume from the volume of the ethanol. So the volume of the ethanol is equal to its mass in grams times the inverse of the density, and here d is density, not diameter, which is grams times milliliters over grams grams cancels, we're left with milliliters. The height is given to us in terms of centimeters, but 
we know that a milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. So we're going to plug in cubic centimeters going through and working this forwards. We're now going to go through and we're going to implement the strategy that we just devised. We need to calculate the volume of the cylinder, which is equal to the volume of the ethanol. The mass of the ethanol is 11.86 grams, multiplying by the inverse of the density, one cubic centimeter over 0 0.789 grams is equal to 15.0 cubic centimeters. The radius we said is equal to the volume, 15 cubic centimeters, over pi times the height, 15 centimeters, canceling out like terms, we're left with one centimeter squared over pi to the one half, which equals 0 0.563 centimeters. Now we're going to calculate the diameter of the cylinder. That's two times the radius, 0 0.563 centimeters, which equals 1.26, 1.126 1 centimeters, which is 1.13 centimeters. We have three sig figs. Two is an exact number. So the answer has three sig figs. We determined that the diameter of the cylinder is 1.13 centimeters. We're now going to use approximations to determine if this is a reasonable value. Approximating the density of ethanol is 1 gram per milliliter, and the mass of ethanol used in the problem is 12 grams, we arrive at a volume of ethanol of approximately 12 cubic centimeters, which we're going to round up and approximate as 15 cubic centimeters. We're going to go through, use that 15 cubic centimeters, plug this into the equation to get the radius. We're going to approximate pi as 3, so the radius is approximately equal to 1 centimeter squared over 3, taking the square root of that, which is approximately equal to 0 0.6 centimeters. 2 times 0 0.6 centimeters is equal to 1.2 centimeters, which is in the ballpark of what we arrived at. That brings us to the end of our problem solving videos. Up next, we're going to talk about Dalton's atomic theory.